Welcome back to Still on the Air, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I am David Pierce Anderson. We're wrapping up the semester. We've got a couple more shows of this. It's Jackson Touchberry. Thanks for joining us once again. How's it going? It's going well. Yeah, good to see you. Had a good weekend, I assume. It was a mixed bag. Yeah, how so? Well, give us the good parts at least. Okay, I'll go, I'll go through the good parts. We had a show, and that was nice. That's right. Laugh La and then Enterprise with the last showcase that we hosted of the season and the semester and all that. Yeah. Um, we still have one more this weekend with Unprepared and Confident. Yeah, that's uh, Saturday at some time at the <laughs> Student Center. We're still waiting to hear that information, so Unprepared, if you're watching us, we would love to find out where you want us and when you want us. I'll be there. We will be there, regardless. Um, but we have uh, this show and then one more show, and then we're all set for the semester. You got any big plans for the next Still on the Air? Well, <laughs> it is my 21st birthday uh, next Tuesday, which will be our when we're shooting Still on the Air. So um, hopefully I can read the teleprompter. <laughs> Put it that way. No, it'll be a fun show. Um, I, I, we're still trying to work on our guests, but hoping for the new student body pre uh, president and vice president. That's the goal, at least. One heck of an election. It was a very thrilling, came down to the final, uh, final moments where they wrote their name down and they won the, won the spot. I think it was only one person that wanted to uh, run. Yep. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. It'll be a good time anyways. Uh, as always, before we get started on the show, we have our non-sponsor. Today's non-sponsor is the Tron Funko Pop. Detailed with the elaborate line work of a native of the grid, this figure absolutely shines above the rest. Literally, it glows in the dark. With a beautiful paint job and the unique iconography, of the classic Tron film, this figure is one that you can sim simply cannot pass up. Also equipped with the light disc, all this figure is missing is a light cycle and a place in your collection. They gotta hire Justin. <laughs> he does a nice job. Um, was it you that sa was saying? I, jokingly, I was like, wow, Captain America looks real weird. <laughs> I mean, he's got the shield and everything. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, looks like the winner, could be the Winter Soldier in 3,000. Surfing the World Wide Web. Exactly. Well, Tron, uh, another movie I should go see. Haven't seen it either. <laughs> That's all right. Well, we got a few news stories. Ireland is opening their first nude beach. If you've ever find yourself at this beach, it is recommended to look directly into the sun because looking at the other patrons at the beach could cause permanent eye damage from the brightness. None of that sounds like a good idea. No, an Irish nude beach. I, I don't know who wanted that exactly. Apparently Ireland. No. No, no, no. Nobody wants to see a naked Irishman. Apparently seals. <laughs> maybe, maybe seals. Are they over there in Ireland? Yes. Are they really? Yes, they okay. are. Um, the more you know. And they're naked yeah. on beaches, so. Well, they're the most tan there, at least. Definitely. Most, most definitely. Yeah. So science has gifted us another amazing creation. Sensors on our teeth. A two, by two, two millimeter by two millimeter sensor can be placed on your teeth and it will send a diagnosis of what you're eating to your tablet or cell phone. These sensors somehow dissect the food you're consuming and then determine if you're eating poorly. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always just used a mirror to, to, to figure that out. This sensor, of course, is wireless, but it is not Bluetooth. Boo. Come on now. I mean... Just don't lie to you. Like, I, I'm eating this. You should know already what you're eating. Yeah, if it tastes good, you shouldn't be eating it, basically. Yeah, general rule. Well, what do you think of that? Would you ever... Uh, okay. Why? For what? I don't know. To be more connected with uh, your phone, even more so. You have wires... I don't need my phone judging what I eat. I do that enough. So you don't want to... I think that, that might be worse, getting a text like, you're fat. It's like, really? Right. It's like the, the K, K period from your girlfriend. Ice cream at 1 p.m.? Are you kidding me? No, I don't need that. I, now, now, that brings up a good point, because I do hope that the text messages are passive aggressive. That would probably work better. Yeah. I agree. It's like, oh, this, this has 100 calories. I know. But if you, if you get a little bite to it, oh, I, like that, I like that a lot. Maybe. I'll look into it. Black Panther has sunk Titanic's time at the top. Too soon. This weekend, it passed the James Cameron classic and became the third highest grossing domestic film of all time behind only Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and another James Cameron film, Avatar. This is a milestone for the superhero film, and we here at Still on the Air, especially Justin, are absolutely elated by the news. The only movie in the foreseeable future that could raise a challenge is Avengers Infinity War, which happens to feature none other than the King of Wakanda himself. 
It's a great time to be alive, and I still have not seen it. You're not going to be alive much longer than that. <laughs> so, because uh, uh, I think it's coming out um, uh, digitally May 8th, and then like a week later, it'll be out on Blu-ray. So I might just might just save it for a family yeah. video. Home stretch, you're almost there. I'm almost there. Um, but I, I feel like there might be a few spoilers or at least moments that I have to have seen Black Panther in the Avengers. You're going to see Avengers before you see Black Panther? I don't want to. I think I should see Black Panther first. That's what I'm saying is that I probably should go out and do that. There's probably a couple spoilers in there. Yeah, get my act together. I don't know. We'll get there. I believe in you. Thank you. Glad someone does. Jackson, as you know, I'm a very big fan of LaCroix sparkling water. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I love the drink, not only for the taste and the 10-cent deposit, but also because the rest of the world hates it, and I just like to be special. But I don't, I don't get why. They just like it. I think it's delicious. I've tried pack practically every flavor, but over the weekend, I found a new one. It's Key Lime LaCroix. I just had to get my hands on it and try it out, and I must say, it is the best one yet. I complimented LaCroix about their new flavor on Twitter, and they responded. So that's big news. I'm, look at that. Aw. Thanks for being an amazing fan, Dave, with a smiley face. I think things are getting pretty serious between us. Their Twitter account seems like, like how their drink would taste, but online. What is that supposed to mean? Bland. <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> You're going to eat your words right now, okay. literally. Okay, yeah, uh, Because I brought you one. Key Lime what? Key Lime LaCroix. I wanna I wanna see what you think of it. It is the best one I've ever had. Naturally essenced. So that was interesting. I was as I was reading it, this is the only one that says naturally essenced. Everyone else says naturally flavored. Huh. So I don't I guess you can't. The, the very natural key lime. So let's get it, get a good slurp. Aerate. Yep, there you go. That's, that's the best LaCroix I've ever had. There you go. Yep. Now, overall as a drink, what do you think of it? Um I don't know. It's, it's fine, actually. I, I enjoy that, surprisingly. It, it doesn't, it has more flavor than every other LaCroix I've ever had. It's not very offensive. I think, I think this is the one to go with. Yep. I think if they try to expand upon the, the artificial, I mean, I guess key lime is a real thing, but it tastes like uh, a key lime pie or a, a green Skittle. That was another one that a lot of people heard about. Try it again. Green Skittle. Think about a green Skittle okay. this time. I'm, I'm imagining a green Skittle. Maybe if they try to do some of the, like, pumpkin pie, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Maybe maybe the uh, the desserts are the way to go. That's another non-sponsor, LaCroix. If you're listening, which I know you are, sponsor us, please. Get a good look at that. Um, yeah, Target has them. I'm sure Meyer has them now. What's your favorite favorite soft drink? Water. Really? And so a little little fun to a little fizz isn't you know you don't like I, it. I got I know. I yeah. took a break for a while because of you know losing weight from water. What? What'd you take a break from? Pop. Oh pop. Okay. Stuff, well, stuff that is fizz. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is healthy. Look at this. No, it has nothing in it except goodness. Only carbonated water. It says only carbonated water. I'm gonna turn you on to this man. No, you're not. Yes, I am. That's keep keep be, trying. It's gonna be my mission. Ooh. How about when I see Black Panther, you go out and buy a case of LaCroix? <laughs> That's not a fair trade at all. I, well, it's, they're both very likely to happen. Yow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I mean, so what do you drink? You, it's just water? That's seriously your, your number one now? Uh, I like apple juice. There you go. Um, now we're getting somewhere in the morning. You're a coffee guy, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's like water and coffee is all I have, basically. How do you make your coffees? Because... Uh, I know you're a uh, connoisseur, a, a coffee snob, maybe even. Uh, no. Uh, these days I use an AeroPress, though, mm -hmm. just because it's so fast. It yeah. makes really good coffee. Now, is that the you show? I don't, I don't know. I just use the old-fashioned Mr. Coffee. Okay, it's, it's, it's not dissimilar from a French press, except mm -hmm. you, you take your regular mug of coffee, and then you put on a filter, and you this contraption that I can't mimic with my hands. Sorry about Can you it. mimic with mine? Yeah, sure, okay. So it's like a thing, and you have your mug down here, and then you, you put your coffee in, and you put boiling water in, and then you just <laughs> press it down, and then you have coffee. I think you could have done that with your hands. No, because I need to do this. Oh, and then you need also, to push yeah. it. 
Well, uh, you'll have to make me a cup sometime. Sure. All right, for sure. Well, we are going to come back and we're going to uh, be joined by a very special guest, Professor Hamill. We're going to talk to you a little bit about, a little bit with uh, him about his career at EMU. Stay tuned. Are you an EMU student interested in getting a first-hand experience working at a radio station? Well, say no more. EMU offers a class through Eagle Radio that will thoroughly prepare you for a real-life experience. But first, you have to register for the class. Pick a date and a time slot. Then the world is yours. Eagle Radio allows you to be fully independent and customize your own show. Have real conversations about the news, celebrity gossip, update listeners about the weather, play a trivia game, it's your show. You're free to name your show whatever you want and play any edited music of your choice. If you love having heated debates and you feel your words need to be heard, then Eagle Radio is just for you. Welcome back to Still on the Air. We are joined today by Professor Hamill. Hamill, thank you for coming by. Hey, it's my pleasure. I have nothing else to do this afternoon. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, we're wrapping up the semester, wrapping up the school year. And, uh, you know, nothing, uh, nothing to do this, um, this afternoon, but talk a little bit about the future because time here at EMU is coming to an end. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, two more weeks after today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. We haven't, by we, I mean my wife and I, we really haven't laid any specific plans. She's also retiring. She's a professor at Siena Heights in theater, <coughs> and she's taking a retirement as well. So okay. we're both going to be out there and doing whatever. Yeah, so no open book right now? <coughs> no, 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 no. Well, I think that's the way to go, um, because when did you start here, or I guess start teaching in general? Well, I started here in August of 87. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I just want to draw attention to myself by <laughs> coughing. Um, but uh, I started teaching my first time is uh, 1973. Okay. I was a grad student at Bowling Green, and one way or another, most of the time since then, I've been in a classroom. Uh, so that's really been what it's been all about, and now it's coming to a, a, a slow end. Are you happy? You happy it's coming uh, around? Yes and no. There's there's a lot of anxiety involved. You know, you've had this beautiful safety net for a number of years, and now that safety net is gone, and now I have to worry about uh, what the fools in Washington are going to do about Medicare and everything else. And so there is some anxiety there, but on the whole, yeah, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. It's and time to go. What was the decision? Time to go. <sighs> I don't know if your if fans are going to want it. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I don't know if your uh, uh, viewers are going to like this, but it's just not fun anymore. Okay. It's, uh, it, it was what I've always wanted to do. I always wanted to, be, to teach, be in a classroom. And unfortunately, uh, this job is more than just being in a classroom. You've got meetings and you've got uh, publications and you've got all this other stuff, which uh, I have always frankly found uh, uninteresting. But uh, I like the teaching aspect of it. But uh, it's changed. Students have changed. The, the approach has changed. The institutions have changed. What's the, maybe you mentioned the students change. Um, what, do you th what have you seen over the course of so almost 40 years, or 40 years, 45? Uh, and again, I'm trying to filter my words out so <laughs> I'm not right. too insulting. Yeah, you got two weeks uh, left. <laughs> yeah. They're going to fire me, right? Yeah, right? I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about students because the students have changed. Uh, there's People have seemed to have been told by the media and various other sources that they have to go to college. Mm -hmm. And as you have heard in my class and several others who are around here have heard in the class, you don't need to go to college. You know, you just don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, Everybody's told they got to go to college, so they go to college and they sit there and I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this, and so their heart's not in it, and they don't really try. And the fact of the matter is that learning anything is not a passive pursuit. You've got to be actively involved. You've got to do the work. You've got to uh, read. You've got to write. You've got to do that stuff. Study. Uh, it's not just a matter of opening up the top of your brain, pouring in education, and they're shaking you up, and all of a sudden, wow, all you're right. smart. Um, and I think students now uh, expect more of that automatic thing. Uh, and 40 years ago, and I, 
it's not that they were radically different. There's always been students who just didn't want to do it. But now it seems that that's the general consensus. There are good students, believe me. That's why I've stuck around this long. But on the whole, I find students uh, are a little bit too indulged and they don't really want to do the work. So I guess the draw to go to college then was you wanted the education. You wanted the education and you wanted to stay out of the draft. Right. There, there were two there. Um, but now it's just, I want to get a better job. Mm -hmm. And this idea that having a college degree is going to make you rich, that's just BS. Mm -hmm. it, it ain't going to happen, folks. Where, I don't know where I am. I'm over here. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. Um, the, you're, if you're going to get rich, it's going to be because you are driven to it. Uh, it's not because you've got a degree that says, I'm smart. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that piece of paper you walk away with is empty, by the way, when you go that's to graduation. It's, there's nothing inside it. Yep. Uh, so why did you want to get into teaching? Was that always a goal <laughs> my, for you? My, my set response has always been is it beats working. Um, but that's, that's just my, my facetious. Mom, mom was a teacher would very much. Detroit Public Schools. Yeah. The, yeah. She worked. Right. You know, this, uh, being a university uh, professor, that's a little bit different mm -hmm. because there's, there's more involved uh, and you're expected to be doing more than just being in the classroom. And we don't have to do like your mother. We don't have to do the lesson plans and all this other stuff. No, we just come in and wing it. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there is a sense that I didn't want to teach children. Mm -hmm. I wanted to teach young adults. And that's why I wanted to be here. I always got off on being in the classroom as a student. Uh, the, all these ideas going around and it just I found it stimulating mm -hmm. and I wanted to be on the other side of that uh, teaching grad school and all that kind of good stuff and so came to a school with no grad school right exactly so with um, the stimulating conversation um, do you th has there been a change with that over time um, do, you, do you feel that there's less in-depth conversations um, I I hear a lot from people that have seen both sides you know been around a while at least, um, that smartphones were losing attention spans. Are we able to dive that deep? Me personally, I'm as I'm wondering, you know, my classmates, can we dive that deep? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, the electronic devices are still relatively new to culture, so the long range effect of them is still to be seen. I suspect, and this is just coming from me, that yeah, it's going to change things. It's going to change TV changed things in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s. So this is bound to have an effect, uh, the smartphones and uh, devices. So yeah, that's changing things too. But for the better, for the worse, I don't know. How is that, um, you know, you started off, has it always been media? You've always taught media? Yeah. Okay. I started off with a journalism degree. Okay. And how did that, how did the, because now with all these uh, new, you know, technology smartphones, it's at our hands now, how has that changed through, you know, by teaching it? Yeah, um, you'd think that people would have more information because they have more information available mm -hmm. to them, but it, not necessarily so. You know, we are uh, in many ways information deprived. We have so much information, but what do you do with it? Which one? What do I need? And yeah, so I, I think it's it's really been, in many respects, it can be a drawback. Okay. It can be strength. It can be a drawback. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to have a little bit more uh, after with uh, more of a, your experience in the field and here at AMU. So we'll be back in a moment. Can't do the water world. The number of passwords you have to remember can be overwhelming. While it may be tempting to reuse the same passwords or store them in a not so safe place, in doing so, you're putting your online accounts and data in danger of being compromised. The Eagle Security Package includes LastPass an encrypted online password vault that can store all your usernames, passwords, and other personal information in one location. LastPass secures your login credentials using one master password, the last password you'll have to remember. Not only does LastPass store your login credentials, but it can automatically fill them in when you're logging into trusted websites. LastPass can also aid in the creation of strong, unique passwords and secure sensitive data such as addresses, credit cards, and personal notes. Since LastPass is encrypted and protected in the cloud, it's accessible wherever you are, through the LastPass website, a web browser extension, or the mobile app. LastPass makes password security easy. For more information about LastPass, visit tiny.emich.edu forward slash LastPass.
Welcome back, everybody. We're talking with Professor Hamill about his time at EMU. Coming to an end, but uh, good things to come, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yes. So uh, talk a little bit about the, the courses you've, you've taught at your time. Um, if you have a favorite or a... Well, the favorite is media literacy. And I, looking around the studio, I see a number of people, yes. Um, that's the, the favorite. But I've taught literally, well, I don't want to say literally. I've taught most of the courses in our curriculum at one time or another. Uh, I was first in this particular studio, Ford B, uh, in 1988. Wow. Uh, We're and probably using the same cameras, honestly. No, 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 no. <laughs> no same light board back there, but uh, the dimmer is all new. Uh, Steve Martin and, and Keith Dameron have done wonders in this place. Um, but I, I started off teaching production because that was what my background was in. So I did all the video, uh, all the video production classes, the audio production classes. I started doing the announcing class, and that's been the consistent one all the way through. I've done that for 31 years now. Um, but then uh, nobody gets a PhD in this field expecting to be teaching production classes at the end of their career, and so I sort of e ease my way out of that about 10, 12 years ago. And so I've been teaching all content stuff, uh, criticism, the intro course, which I don't teach anymore, uh, criticism, media literacy, uh, did a lot of news writing classes because I started in journalism. Um, so I, I've been the whole shoot and match of our curriculum. So what did you do before teaching? Because you mentioned your you know, yeah, experience I, in the field. I started off in the newspaper. I was a sports editor in Norwalk, Ohio for the Norwalk Reflector. Big one. Yeah, it was a it was a six day a week uh, newspaper. I did sports, but you also did other stuff. I was a photographer, and did that kind of stuff. Then went back to college, got my master's degree, uh, got into production because I knew by that time I think I want to go to radio and TV, and uh, went back to Bowling Green, got my master's there, did some stuff, ended up teaching. Uh, after that point, then I was always teaching, mm -hmm. and sometimes there would be production involved with it. Uh, produced some shows at India State while I was down there, television shows, did some uh, live uh, audio, live radio drama, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you mentioned Bowling Green, Indiana State, EMU, are those the only Yeah, uh, I got all three of my degrees from Bowling Green, which is, my colleagues will say that's a no-no, but right. I did. Uh, but I taught at Indiana State for five years at, during the Larry Bird era. Oh, really? There. Yeah. Did and, you ever uh, uh, come across Bird? Yeah, you know, you see him on campus, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, he gave us some exciting time down there. That uh, 1979, damn Magic Johnson. <laughs> but uh, sorry, you. Michigan. Go Green, go White. <laughs> um, it's ambiguous that Eastern Michigan could be <laughs> for us, but. <laughs> um, then I taught at a junior college for a while, where I was also doing production, and then, like I said, since '87, I've been here. Right. Been just so I, I do want to talk a little bit about the announcing class because that's first met you through there. Um, has easily been my favorite class, and uh, I thought you did a great job. Um, hard enough on us, but you know, just straight to the point. I think. Um, any interesting stories with that? Because um, I know we had a. <laughs> we, there was the one, you know, the demonstration on on camera. Um, we the, had that was one of, the one of our courses. Yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be a good story in that one, yeah. Well, I, I think I shared that whole story with, is there anybody here who wasn't in that class? I, I don't think so. Cameron hasn't been there. Production. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a fellow who came in to do the four-minute presentation, and he brought in his, a buddy of his who was his mannequin, couldn't speak, and they were both dressed in full camo, and this is like 1988, something like that, before all the craziness really kicked in. And... Uh, he proceeded to pull out, he opened his case up and there were just knives everywhere. You name the kind of knife it was in there. Hunting knives, bayonets, uh, stilettos, Butter? switchblades, probably. <laughs> um, and he spent four minutes showing us how to kill his partner. Wow. Slitting throats, in through the skull, was he in the kidney. Uh, probably after the fact. <laughs> after the yeah, fact. but uh, that was that was kind of strange. It was, but that there's been a lot of interesting folk through that class. Indeed. And you probably felt pretty pressured to give him a good grade on that one. Actually, uh, he it was an excellent production. He he, he knew what he was doing. Uh, I would have probably given him uh, an A minus, but he got an A. You know? <laughs> right, right. That's push you in the right direction. Keep my bases covered. Uh, I always tell the class I imagine him now somewhere off, way off the grid in the UP 
uh, killing marmots for, for dinner. Or for fun. Or for fun. Yeah. So uh, talking a little bit about um, media literacy, because that's where we have you right now. Um, how important, is, and I know, I know how important it is, briefly to our viewers, how important is media literacy in that course? You got to know who's talking to you. You've got to understand that not everything you read, see, hear is going to have your best interest in mind, and yet we all think we do. Uh, people need to uh, really get involved with who's sending you that message and what do they want from you. Uh, it's not all fake news. You know, it, in spite of what our Fuhrer tells us, it's not all fake news. Um, and it's, it behooves us as citizens to understand who's talking to us, to make sense out of it, and not just the, <coughs> pardon me, not just think that uh, we can ignore what's going on. We can't. Um, this is one of the things you ask about how students have changed. Students don't read news. They don't consume news now the way they used to. Uh, in your particular class, the media literacy class, when I, we do the student, uh, the media assessment, I'm just always amazed at how many people who say they want to go into journalism don't consume news. Mm -hmm. How are you going to consume, how are you going to produce something if you don't consume it? What do you think that's going to mean for the future? I mean, that's a... I'm going to be dead. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, it's, it's going to it, ultimately, ultimately, and I, I don't, I hate being this guy, but all you have to do is go back to 1930s Germany and see how it ends up. Uh, as Hitler and Goering knew, and, and I think uh, our current Fuhrer knows, if you tell somebody something over and over, they're going to start believing it. And uh, especially when that power monger wants to tell you that everybody else is lying to you, well, it's up to us to figure out who's lying, mm -hmm. uh, who's not telling the truth. And we have a guy here who uh, has spent his entire career lying, and now he's the president. So, mm -hmm. sorry, but that's just the way it is. That's the way it is. Well, <laughs> uh, you heard it here first. No, yeah. not actually. Um, <laughs> Hopefully it's not it's, first. It's been everywhere, yeah. If you haven't found out by now, um, in for rude awakening. But I really do want to thank you for coming on the show. I want to thank you for all your time at EMU. Uh, I think, uh, personally, you're easily my favorite professor. Um, I want to thank you thank for that. You. I think, yeah, I mean, I, and I know for, for a lot of us, uh, uh, you really helped out a lot of people throughout uh, this whole time. So. Thank you for all that. Thank you for being honest with us. And I think, uh, at the, yeah, bottom line. Demand people to be honest with you. All right. Well, I will start doing that. <laughs> Justin, tell me how you really feel. All right. We'll be back after the break. We'll see our goodbye. That's our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media at ETV at EMU and watch all of our shows on Campus Cable Channel 18 or anytime on YouTube. I'm David Pierce Anderson. This is Jackson, Professor Hamill. Thank you for coming by once again. As always, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you next time. <laughs>